Hello, and welcome to another CAD Dimensions Tech Tip. My name is Ian, and today I'd like to show you the Pathmate, which is a good way to show motion in your SOLIDWORKS assemblies. As you can see here, I have a few Pathmates already defined to show the motion of these beads along the pipes. You can see as I move the mouse along the path, the only motion that is allowed is defined by that red pipe. So let's go ahead and add a path mate to this orange cube to this blue pipe here. So we'll start by going into the mate section and then the advanced tab and then the path mate. For a path mate, you need two uh, components. Uh, the first being the path itself and then the point on which the component will ride along. Um, you can use geometry like these points here on this cube. You can use the uh, component's origin. Um, in my case, I'm going to use the center point of the cut extrude here. So I'll go ahead and show all sketches. So I'll go ahead and select the center point of that cut extrude. Now it's going to ask for the path of, for the path mate. I'm going to use the blue pipe, so I'm going to use this 3D sketch here. Because it is a bunch of uh, entities, I'm going to use the selection manager. Uh, that way I can select open loop. When I hover over the sketch now, you can see that I kind of get a preview of the path uh, for this uh, with the kind of an orange highlight. Uh, so I'll go ahead and select that. When I hit the green check here, the orange cube will jump onto the path somewhere along here. Um, that'll just be made it that way. Okay. So a couple other things that we have to define. Uh, the first being the path constraint. Uh, right now it has free reign to travel from this point to this point uh, in both directions. We can set the distance along that uh, path for, let's say, two inches. So what this means is that from this point here to this point here, if you were to lay it out straight, it would be two inches. Um, if I wanted to go from this side, I will simply just flip the dimension. So now it is from here to here if that is two inches. The other way we can define a constraint along this path is with a percentage. Um, similar to the distance, we will just give it a value. Um, in this case, right now it is set to 11.3%. What that means is from here to here it is 11.3% uh, complete from the path. So if I were to set this, say, at 25, now it is 25% along the path this way. I can also flip the dimensions, so that is 25% this way. Just know that with both of these constraints, the percentage and the distance, it will lock the component in that position um, and won't allow it to travel along the path. Um, it's kind of like defining a point in space for that component. Um, so for now, I'm just going to leave this as free as I want the component to move freely along that path. The other two controls that we have are in regards to rotation and how the component will move along the path. Um, in this example, I'm going to use the pitch to jaw control. As you can see, the cut extrude hole isn't aligned with the, the path. Um, so I actually do want that. Um, it's more realistic that way. So I'll go ahead and change it from free to follow path. Uh, when I do that, you can see that there's a little axis that comes up on the origin of that part. Um, it would be from the point sketch to um, the circle that I want is in the Z direction, uh, so I'm going to head and select that. What you can see now is that that is facing the right direction, so that component will now follow along that path correctly. I'm going to leave the roll control free for now. I'll show that in another example. So I'll go ahead and hit the green check and green check, zoom out a little bit and turn off the sketches. So now if I begin to move this, you can see 
that I am able to move the orange cube all along the blue pipe. The last thing I wanted to show in the PathMate is the bowl control constraint. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show it on this example here. Um, as you can see, I do have a PathMate. Um, I am allowed to rotate it uh, freely, but it is constrained with that Z axis that I defined, similar to this orange cube. Um, so go ahead and edit the mate. Let's see, I have that Z direction. So I'll give it a up direction. Um, this will make it so that whatever uh, edge or face or plan that I select is going to be the up direction. Um, in this case, I'll just use this edge here. You can see this is pointing vertically. Right now, my up vector is defined by this X direction here. And you can see they're both pointing in the same direction. Uh, if I wanted to flip it, I could just simply flip it. If I wanted for this direction here to be the up direction, I'll just hit the Y. And now you can see it rotated it. You can see that the Z is also not able to select because I have it defined here. Um, if you select one of these, you're not able to select it down here. Um, it's kind of controlling the degrees of freedom. So now if I hit the green check, green check, you can see I'm no longer able to rotate that component, only allowed to go on the path defined. I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to come back to our YouTube channel for more SOLIDWORKS content.